guys, I'm Alex. I'm Jason, we're the Table Monkeys, and today we are gonna be going over BLM's matches with Curtis Porkchop Cameron from the Pembroke Free For All event, which was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, it's a great example of how important it is to fight, but way before the goal happens, during the setup, throughout the entirety of a match. Yeah. Especially with uh, Devin and uh, John drama going on, and Devin talking about how this game is really just a fight and all about a few millimeters. Yeah, that's, that's I think the other thing that's really uh, a great example in this is how uh, Brendan is fighting for just literally little like millimeters here and there, but uh, because he knows exactly what he needs to fight for, um, that is, that's part of the whole uh, thing that exemplifies is how it's a fight and not just a strength sport. Um, because, yeah, you can be super strong, which Curtis is definitely stronger than yep. Brendan, there's no question about that. Uh, but only if he can get to the lanes in which he is that strong, which because Brendan pulls with him so much, he knew exactly what those lanes were and exactly how to keep him away from them. And in, in reality, that's the same as it is for a lot of pullers. It's basically the same thing he did to Brian DeSormo, who he smashed earlier in the competition. Steve Morneau. Um, Steve Morneau. Yeah. And, and these guys are beastly strong. Um, and uh, it, it, it all comes down to how much Brendan fights, like Alex said, before the go, during the setup, uh, once the match starts. And then not just being willing to fight so hard, but knowing where and how to fight, right? Yeah. So we thought it'd be a good idea to analyze these matches for you so you can see just how important it is to fight all the time uh, in an arm wrestling match. And you're going to see he's doing more or less the same thing, but it's just continuing to find a way to either get away with it or get it done in the way that he gets what he wants, doesn't get a foul. You know, it keep like keeping the thing with being on the arm wrestling table is you're, you're trying to keep everybody happy you want your opponent to feel somewhat comfortable so that they're not fighting you too hard or whatever it is same thing with the refs all that you know like there's there's a lot of negotiating that goes on and if you're not aware of what's going on it's easy to uh like we said in the setup video before feel like you got fucked because yeah. you just don't know what actually happened right yeah so here we go with uh Curtis and BLM all right guys, so this is the first match that they met uh, during the tournament, like on the A side. Um, and we're gonna watch each match uh, in full speed, then we'll slow it down and talk about it. So uh, here it is as it happened. All right, so as you can see, lots of fight coming yes. from BLM. Doesn't give a shit that this is like one of his best friends. <laughs> uh, he's there to fucking kill him and rip his head off. So let's go back uh, again and watch that in the slowest of motions. So Curtis obviously loses on fouls there. False start the first time and then elbow foul, but a lot happens in, in that match. Especially the second setup here, which is yeah. mainly the one we want to look at, is once he's in the ref script and uh, um, yeah, and Curtis has already got that first foul for the early start. So uh, okay, we're at half speed. We're at the right spot. That should be good. And here we go. So first thing is, BLM obviously got Curtis to a ref script. Yeah, which is super important because it makes it harder for Curtis to get what he wants in this setup, and easier for BLM to get what he wants. Because in this setup, you can see how he's rising his wrist up like this yeah and pulling back even though craig is holding onto their hands yeah one thing I, I noticed at watching it like happen live was how like he was able to have like craig's holding his hand and yeah because he pushes his elbow forward he's able to rise his wrist into whoever he was pulling he did it to brian he did it to steve uh whoever he's pulling he's able to raise the the this part of his wrist into their fingers so they can't get the grip that they want but he does it by pushing his like alex just did, pushing his elbow forward and letting his wrist rise up as opposed to pulling on his fingers so the ref doesn't feel it and you'll notice too in every single setup the ref says don't move he'll say he's not moving or i'm not or whatever and then as soon as the ref starts to move their hands he looks to the ref and starts talking to him saying cap my finger i want my finger capped and i mean it's clearly just a distraction tactic yeah. you know yeah. um and every time he does that he gets a little bit of his rise that he wants and we're talking like this much of a difference but in in the grip 
like Devin made the point, it's a game of millimeters, that makes a huge, huge difference where Curtis just can't get the grip that he wants, so there's no way for him to access his power. So he doesn't even actually like fully apply it, yeah. you know, because he's waiting to connect to it. And, yeah. and you see, Curtis never has access to his hand. No, one more thing he's doing is creating separation between yeah. their thumbs. So what the hooker wants is to get nice and deep wrapped around their thumb because then you can get a super nice grip with your fingers. Yeah. But in this setup, because he's pulling back this way and bringing his thumb to the side, it creates a gap this way and also sideways. Yeah. So he has, Curtis has way less opportunity to get his fingers uh, wrapped around Bill Lamb's hand. Yeah, and I actually remember just, um this weekend at the PAL event, uh, Brian was talking about how Curtis was doing that, how he was, or sorry, how Brandon was doing that, how he's pushing his thumb out like this so they can't actually get a palm to palm grip, which again, that's what a, a hook puller or somebody who wants to actually get control of the hand that way wants. So they wanna get in there and by Brendan keeping him away that way, but then still able to get connection where he wants, he's able to use the top of his wrist and just manipulate the grip to get exactly what he wants and keep them completely uh you know away from what they want yeah, so, so again, let's just watch it. <clears throat> so that little bit looks like he's just loading back pressure but he's rising his wrist into the knuckles or into curtis's fingers and then on the go you can just see from the go curtis has got absolutely nothing uh in the setup and that's again in a ref's grip and um he does it repeatedly over and over to multiple opponents. So it's hard to say that it's just the ref with different refs, right? So it's hard to say that it's the refs uh, that are letting him get away with it. Um, it's clearly that he is one crafty motherfucker. Yes, that's for sure. So give us a second, we're gonna pull up the other video. All right, so now we're on to the final. So it's just BLM and Curtis left in the, in the entire tournament. Uh, Curtis obviously has the, the one loss from BLM and BLM is undefeated. So Curtis needs to beat BLM three times to win the, the entire event. Yeah. Tall order, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and this is uh, match one. So again, we'll watch it full speed. Uh, we'll throw the volume on so we can listen to it and watch it, the video uh, courtesy of Arm Sports Videos. And uh, and then we'll go back in slow-mo. Yeah, all right. Both of these guys basically ran through all their opponents, obviously except BLM for Curtis. Um, so they're, they're basically both fresh. Yeah. Um, and they're going into like a best of five super match right now. More or less, yeah. Or best of three. And he gets the rough strip. Basically, talks him hook into it. Let's kind of squeeze. Waste Work. more hand energy. Get to the straps. But again, same setup, same hand control. Brendan got up yeah. that go. This is where you would think Curtis would have more options because he's connected to his arm a bit more. And you kind of see he does, but Brendan again is in exactly the position he wants. Elbow is completely inside his body, so there's more access to rotation. Yeah, and he's just able to go, rotate to the side with ease whenever he wants. Yeah, and constantly working up Curtis's hands and deeper into his fingers, higher up under his throat. Yeah. Curtis has no connection to his fingers. He's yeah. so low on his hands. And in the end, he ends up getting an elbow foul right here, which was a bit of a micro foul, but it's his second one. He gets it called. It definitely did come off, but. Uh, the point is that even though that's a loss for BLM, it was probably his best round. And uh, it took the bar out yeah, of Curtis. Of how much it took out of Curtis. Yeah. And again, constantly fighting. Doesn't matter what he's fighting for, whether he's fighting for the pin that wasn't a pin or the elbow foul, it was an elbow foul. He's constantly, constantly fighting. Yeah, right? he's pushing the limit for the ready go each time, going a little bit early or right on point every single time. Yeah. He's obviously feeling a little bit more comfortable with Curtis's hand at this point because he's not fighting to get into a rest grip. Yeah. Um, but he's still fighting just as much in the setup.
So we're wasting no time in that round. Didn't even bother holding and waiting yeah. to get position. We had enough rotation and Curtis to have uh, this, his arm is obviously gassing yeah. a ton right now. So BLM just went straight for the pin. Yeah. So now Curtis has two losses, Brendan has one, and it's a triple elimination. So Curtis needs to, again, he needs to win twice. He can't lose again. And this one, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it was it was an early hit, but again, like Alex said, he's riding the line. It was right there. Like it's a fast, ready go from the ref. When you go back and watch it in slow mo, you'll be able to see it was a bit early, but not uh, not like too crazy. But the main thing is it took a it was hurting Curtis a ton. Yeah, it, like took a lot out of him. Yeah. Anytime you can fall start and take something out of your opponent. And just get a warning or a foul. And we, the whole team saw that when it happened. Like the, our, our whole team was like, God damn, man, that was brutal. Like yeah. to, to hit your friend like that on a relatively early start just to fuck with his arm yeah. in order to take it out of him. Because then you can see on that last pull, like Curtis isn't there at all. Curtis is totally like, he's, he's done at that point. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, like going back now as we're watching in slow-mo, you're gonna see all the little intricacies. But the point is the whole time, Brendan's fighting hard and he's fighting for what he needs to take away what Curtis wants to get the best and most dominant position to make the fight as, not, not as easy, but to, to guarantee his win as much as possible. Exactly, right? yeah, and you'll see, just look at Brendan's eyes. They're either like focused completely on the hand and getting everything he wants in the hand, or he's looking at the ref and talking to him, distracting him. Yeah. Curtis, at some point he's looking at his hand and other times he's just looking away and just hoping that he gets what he wants off the go. Yeah. And I feel like Brennan is just so dialed in on the setup and the hand. And you hear Brennan talk about that, about how he tries to, he tries to convince his opponents that they're gonna lose before they even pull, you know, or convince the refs that he's gonna win before he even pulls and all that stuff. And there is, that, that's a, that is an element of the, the sport. And it, someone like Travis Bajan, for example, has this same kind of uh, tactic and ability to do that. And then people will accuse him of, oh, he just cheats. And then Travis's answer to that, which I love, is always, uh, if all I do is cheat, then like, what are you gonna get better at? All you can do is hope that I don't cheat again. Yeah. And that's the point, is that if Brendan's not cheating, Travis isn't cheating, they're using everything at their disposal to try to get the win. And uh, if you don't, like, if you don't know how to counter those attacks, then they're gonna work on you and they're gonna work so well they feel like cheating, Yeah. Exactly. right? So here we go back in slow-mo and uh, catch all the cheating. They obviously know each other. BLM knows he's going to win the endurance battle between Curtis. So if Curtis wants to squeeze his hand and waste his energy, BLM is more than happy to let him do that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Even that part, he's telling him, squeeze, baby. <laughs> he knows that that's, uh, that's what he wants. And then as soon as Curtis gets a grip that he wants, you can see here, Brendan's out there rolling his wrist, using his leverage to take that grip away and make Curtis have to open and squeeze again. And then he comes back and here, do it again. Let's do it again. And now he's talking to the ref saying, you know, might as well go to ref script. This yeah. is going to take forever. And eventually you're going to see that they are in a ref script because boom, yeah. Greg Russo's yeah. like, fuck that. We're not going to deal with that long anymore. Day. So the left hand to go. Yeah. So same setup from BLM with his his uh, wrist rised up high. His thumbs super far away from each other. Yeah. And knuckles down, knuckles down so that he can get his fingers deep and still get some contact to the back of uh, Curtis's wrist. But you can see just there, like look how little finger Curtis is able to get, like the ref has to wrap around yeah. Brendan's hand. And as soon as Curtis wraps his hand, you can see Brendan rise, so he has his complete riser intact. Yeah. He is dropping in the setup, but as soon as Curtis, or as Craig wraps his fingers, he's rising and taking everything. Yeah. And again, which which uh, we didn't point out, but as soon as Craig is closing the hands, he's looking at Craig and talking to him, saying, cap my finger, cap my finger, you know, which he obviously he wants his finger cap, but the reason for doing it in that way is to distract the ref a little bit, because as he's saying that, he's, you know, doing his little rise with his wrist. Um, and here we are in the strap, same setup, same situation, right? And Greg, Greg isn't asking him if he wants his finger cap or anything right now. He's telling him, don't move. And <laughs> Kurt and Brendan's there telling him, cap my finger, cap my finger. You know? And he does. And he does, yeah. And now this is where, again, so now, as soon as his finger's capped, you can see he engages a bit of his 
grip there. Curtis isn't feeling comfortable with that. And bang, he's right back where he wants and to be. And he's in that reversal, like, low hand top roll where he's cupping to his right side, getting his riser back, dragging back, um, and just, just sitting there comfortably. Yeah, this is probably the most like traditional arm wrestling where we could actually like look at the hill where we know Curtis wants to come in for that uh, H3 and P1 yeah. uh, move. And the best answer for that is the T3 like low hand uh, top roll, which is what Brennan is just amazing at. Yeah. So even though they're strapped together, and this is definitely where Curtis can really access his strength, and you can see Brennan isn't as in control of the hand and able to fly through him as much uh, as he was out of the strap, um, but because of the way the moves are working out together, Brendan's definitely in the in the comfy position here. Yeah. And and you just continue to watch how, how he continues to eat up the thumb. He's either climbing the thumb or raising his wrist into the fingers and just continuing to break through uh, Curtis's hand. And this is where like, yeah, Curtis is staying tight and strong, but he's not anywhere near his power. So he's not actually driving to the pad. He's not creating any actual threat. So because of that, because he's not really sure where to fight or what it is to, he needs to take away from Brendan to get what he wants. When Brendan's not climbing or actively attacking, he's just resting, yep. you know? And the whole time, Curtis is under tension with his wrist bent back. And Curtis can't really get any more forward just because of how short he is. He can't get his shoulder close to his hand to like commit fully to a, a, a flop press. And if he, does, if he does bring his body forward, the amount that he brings his body forward is just gonna be Brendan hitting right through that gap. Exactly. Which you could just see Curtis pull his arm in because he's trying to stay tight. He doesn't want to get over, like he wants to get over his hand, but he wants that to happen from his hand coming inside his body, not from his body going across the table. Cause yeah, and Bielema is just not letting that happen, hitting straight to the side through his shoulder multiple times, here. probably making it uh, even like discouraging him from, from committing a shoulder even more. Yeah, and he, here comes the elbow foul. Oh no, that was just, the, it just happened. But it is a bit of a micro foul. I will give Brendan that, that maybe Craig was being a little a little tight on him, but uh, but still, he that's you know maybe Greg's making up for the fact that he knows he got fucked in the ref script a little <laughs> bit because it's so hard to catch him. So, um, but either way, that's the first and only win for Curtis. Uh, but in reality, Brendan's completely in control of that match. Yeah, and that, that, that's that a win for B L M. Yeah, and that match definitely took a shitload out of uh, Curtis's arm. So, uh, on to the next one. Um, again, in the setup, Brendan doing the same thing, using his wrist, getting outside. Uh, you notice he does this thing, that's where he's trying to stay behind his pronation. Um, so as much as Curtis wants to squeeze it down, instead of Brendan having to use a bunch of uh, musculature to bring it back, he can get behind it and then use his frame to wrench up into Curtis's yeah. fingers, right? It's that classic top roll reversal style of low hand top rolling. Yeah. And he's actually much more comfortable now. He's not trying to get to a ref script. He's letting Curtis get a little bit more of what he wants, but he's so quick. His reaction time is perfect. He hits uh, before Curtis even has a chance to engage, completely takes his hand. And it's not just that his, his like that he hits so uh, quickly, it's how efficient his hit is. Mm -hmm. It's so precise. He's hitting every single vector that he needs to hit uh, and right away, you know, to get to it. And um, and again, it's not it's not because he's overpowering Curtis in any way. He's just getting him where he wants and taking Curtis away from where he wants. And it's uh, yeah, it's 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 really masterful. <laughs> so and that, that was a yeah, that was a pin, right? No, that wasn't a pin. They, they called it. Oh right, right. A slip, even yeah. though I feel like it should have been a pin or yeah. at least a, a slip in the losing position. Yeah. So let's move on. Uh, so same round, so they call it a slip, so now we're in the strap. Same setup, Brendan doing the same thing. Yep, getting super behind his arm, yep. securing his pronation. Lots and lots of back pressure, leaning back, you know. He's going He's going one place and one place only, and that's through Curtis's hand via his fingers. Just, it's it's uh, like so obvious. And, uh, and there's all this fighting in the setup, they're not they're not resting here. They're they're continually loading. Yeah, which is great for Brendan and, and not good for Curtis. And boom, right away, out into his hand. Curtis can already tell. Um, Brendan super tight. Curtis wide open. And again, we're basically in that same position where Curtis or Brendan is hitting that T three 
low hand Curtis was trying to come in a little bit and he doesn't even get close to it at this point so now it doesn't even look like like Curtis is in any kind of a move it just looks like he's being taken across the table but he's clearly trying to get inside and get behind his arm yeah it's just now he's just completely on his bicep yeah he's got uh, nothing no hand no shoulder yeah and makes a little desperation move uh, <laughs> at the end obviously rolling out um, and uh, trying to go to the Kings yeah. but uh, on, on the roll out there uh, his knuckles it's kind of hard to see from this angle but being uh, close to the table you could see it was it was a pin um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, so now it's two one for BLM. Yeah. So he needs one more win to yeah. to get the victory. Exactly. So now this is the one where really the, the match ends before the go because uh, again, always fighting, always fighting before the go is uh, Brendan gets that one early hit, um, which we'll show you so you can see how close it was to the actual go. Um, and uh, in doing that, it really fucks with uh, Curtis's arm. I think he's, you said he talked to you, told you that. Yeah, after, he told right? me like this one really hurt. Yeah, and Curtis isn't <coughs> adjusting at, at all really during this entire setup. So BLM doesn't really need to adjust. Exactly, he's doing yeah. the exact same thing because yeah. it's working. If it ain't yeah. broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and and it's getting easier because yeah. he just keeps burning out those the strengths that Curtis has there. Um, so you know he's more and more confident with it. So here, let's watch here. You can see right on the ready, ready. And now he starts to go, and the go is right there. Like the go is, is right after the ready, but he clearly starts moving on the ready. And uh, but when you slow it down, you can see it's not like he was going it's not way, blatantly, way. No. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's just obvious. it's just playing the um, you know playing the game and trying to make sure that you get the get the hit off. So yeah. Um, yeah so, so yeah. Curtis takes a step away from the table. Because obviously that one that one really hurt him. Uh, he's taken a lot of hits <laughs> in yeah. that location, yeah, exactly. and uh, usually with some kind of resistance. But that time there was absolutely none, so it and be ripped through. Because it was right on the ready, I'm sure Curtis was starting to tense up a bit. So he's probably, if you've ever had that happen in practice, where you're just about to tense up, so you're like 50% tense, and somebody hits into it, it can really like jar you loose, you know, yeah. and, and and tweak you in a way you weren't expecting. So I feel like that's clearly what happened, and then. You can just look at the facial expressions, like, yeah. Brennan is dialed in, eyes completely dot focused on the hand, Curtis looking away, looks exhausted, yeah. not paying attention. Yeah, and probably, he's probably, he's not paying attention to what's going on here because he's so focused on thinking about what just happened or, like, how the match has gone. Like, he's, yeah. again, like Alex said, he's not in the moment now, Brendan's 100% there, and this is a fight, it's not a strength sport, yep. and, and you've got to be there for the fight. Exactly, BLM still fighting in the setup, rising before the go, completely in his, in his fingers. I was obviously a lot more comfortable now and even, even had the audacity to come inside a little bit before hitting for the yeah. pin. So again, just a masterclass uh, from Brendan. And uh, again, what this all really ties into is the drama right now between Devin and uh, John and Devin's whole point of how this is a fight, it's a combat sport, you're there to fight the whole time and that is there's nothing i mean it's not more obvious than it could be in this match I think. yeah exactly and it's not nothing to do with the refs it's between the two competitors on a table negotiating fighting for everything that they want and there's no excuses on either side curtis obviously respects blm's fight and has, has nothing bad to say about him after this match the, the bottom line is in any fight somebody is in control at one point or another and that control can switch and go back and forth which makes for an exciting fight but you're always looking for that control in a fight and yes like like Devin said the ref is there to facilitate to make sure that somebody isn't blatantly breaking the rules or being unsportsmanlike or whatever the, the game is or the sport is that you're playing but if it's a combat sport, if it's there and you're fighting each other, you're you're you need to be in control mm -hmm. of that fight, and that's what fighting in the setup and fighting before the go and getting pumped up and getting in your opponent's head and all that shit. That's what all that's about yeah. is gaining some sort of control. So like in that last match there, where Brendan is completely in control, completely dialed in, focused on everything, and Curtis is completely out of it. Well. That's not necessarily like Curtis's fault that he got there. That had a lot to do with all the punches and attacks that Brendan threw to put him in that position. Yeah, right? and that's another thing that just makes arm wrestling so great. Is it's not a strength sport. It is a combat sport. The weaker guy, obviously BLM here, can win, can dominate his opponent, and and just gives hope to all the guys who aren't gifted with strength. 
off the go. Yeah, and it's not that, like we said uh, a few videos ago, it's not that BLM isn't strong, like mm -hmm. he's not a weakling by any means, but the strength variance between him and Curtis is the complete opposite of what you see how the matches play out, exactly. which is the point. You obviously, strength is rule number one. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong enough to make your tricks and tactics be worth it, but at the same time, uh, you can make up a huge gap in strength, like Alex is saying, because it's not actually a strength sport. It's a combat sport in which strength is the number one factor. Yeah. So. All right, guys, so that's the video. Obviously, in conclusion, arm wrestling is a fight. It's a combat sport. Yeah, and the fight starts way before the goal. So you've always got to be looking for any advantage you can get and be fighting from, you know, as soon as you know the match is going to happen, you should be trying to fight, trying to get in your opponent's head, trying to figure out a way uh, to get what you want out of it and take them away from what it is they want. Yeah, right? no excuses. Don't let the rest get in your way. It's a fight between you and your opponent. Yeah. So like the video, leave comments uh, below, subscribe, smash that bell. Share all those things and monkeys out. Peace.